Yeah, good morning, Jess. Good morning to uh, Russell and Mark as well. I've got Cameron McConville joining me for this one. Lots to talk about those on-track incidents yesterday, particularly that wing cup and winter bottom one. Now, you've been part of that judicial process before. What do you make of all this? Well, I think Beto got it right, to be honest, 100% right. I looked at it. I watched the race from our Carrera Cup lounge. A lot more comfortable. It's a lot easier over there <laughs> yeah. from being in the uh, judicial role. And, yeah, I, I agree. I just, look, I think if Mark had have just not quite turned in as aggressively, they probably both would have had a bit of door-to-door -door contact and got through the corner. So, yeah, I think... Uh, and, and the more you can do the old play on and not ping drivers, the more entertaining the racing will be because they'll actually think, well, I can have a go at trying to pass and I'm not going to get pinged all of the time. So that one up to turn eight, I don't think we've ever had three cars arrive side by side. So the old, it was interesting listening to Russell and Mark, who has right of way. It's generally the car in front has right of way. They've all kind of got past the 150, I think, and then gone, uh-oh, now who rolls out of it? And then too late, you have, a, you have an accident. I read on supercars.com that Todd Kelly actually admitted to reckless driving in that situation. So right. he's put his hand up for it. OK. So, anyway, let's... Go back to yeah. Australian GT. So for this one, Chad, Peter Major took it out yesterday on his debut, but both he and Roger Largo have to stop for three seconds longer. So they're both stopping a minute six. Tony Bates, 59 seconds. So he's the, he's the one to watch. He has seven seconds up his sleeve for his uh, CPS. That's a good pickup. He'll be starting on that second row. So this is the last race of the weekend for the GTs. Killer race yesterday. Good race between these two Lamborghinis. First one-two for Lamborghini since 2008, which uh, is going back quite a few years. Good sign for you who's going to hop in for a Lamborghini at the next round. We're going to hop down to the lane. Cameron, what's going on? Just a couple of updates from yesterday. The Ash Samadhi car was a drive shaft issue, and we also had the James Bird Mueller and Stephen Richards BMW, and that was a vacuum line, so they had no boost. Thank you, mate. They also had an ECU drama in the first race, so the poor BMW has been up against it this weekend. There's been some post-race penalties as well. Uh, I'll get to that in a second when I see the names pop up on the grid. This is what it looks like, an old Lamborghini front row. Tony Bates will have a shorter pit stop time than those two guys ahead of him. Liam Talbot, consistent this weekend. Tim Miles, James Kondouris. That'll be Ash Walsh starting in the 44 in this race. Watch out for him. Ross Griffith, um, a pair of Mercedes on that fifth row. Now, that'll be Kelvin Vanderlinder in the 74, and they got a 30-second penalty yesterday for being involved in one or two of those accidents. Gregoul also got a penalty for some contact that was made yesterday, picking up 30 seconds as well. So it's been a busy night in this category, talking yeah. about the judicial system. Well, I was actually just talking to Craig Baird, the DSO for V8 Supercars, about GT, just to get some insights into the Mercedes. And he said, yeah, they've been given actually a, a sl slightly more of a restrictor and more weight off the back of the 12 hour, which he said just really hurts you here. He said, I just can't pass. The, the Gallardo Lamborghinis are just too quick in a straight line. So it is a balance of performance category and the BOP has been updated and uh, the Merc not as quick as it was, but I've no doubt you can see there's one on the second row. You get to a track like Phillip Island where it's more flowing, more aerodynamic and the, uh, the Merc will be one of the cars to beat. And that's the part of the excitement and attraction around GT racing. Each car has its strengths. Yep. That is balance of performance, or parity as we would call it in supercars. They always try and make sure that the field is equal. This looks like a really nice grid formation coming around the corner here. Set up two by two, all the way back to position 23. The last race of the weekend for the Australian GT Championship. Ready to go on the green flag. Racing on the streets of Adelaide. Major trying to get that jump on the sister way beginning to the left. Largo gets through, doesn't he? Oh, look at these Lamborghinis oh. getting up on the curbs, and this is getting a bit racy. Do we get through turn three? Looks to be the case. So Peter Major there, just a lot of curb, and it did not like it at all. In fact, when he landed, it really spat the car sideways as he picked the throttle up. So I'm not sure if he just clipped a, a limiter on the upshift, because he looked like he got the jump on Largo, and then Largo came back at him. So maybe just... Went, got a little bit greedy on a gear shift and just doesn't take much to touch the rev limiter and just really hurts your momentum. We're on board the Walkinshaw Porsche with mega fuel sponsorship. Liam Talbot at the wheel. Fraser Ross just ahead of him in the total Techno Autosport McLaren. We go through turn eight. Pirelli still not quite up to temperature and that is zero from three for the 100. That BMW has had a weekend to forget. Certainly has. So that'd be James Bergmuller. 
uh, showing Steve Richards actually. So uh, should be Richard on the car right yeah, now. Starting, yeah, starting of course because uh, Berg Miller started yesterday. So you alternate the co-drivers if you do have two drivers in the race. Of course, Largo, Bates, and Major at the front all sole, dri uh, sole drivers this weekend, not sharing their car. A lot more track time for them. Fraser Ross in the McLaren 650S. This car off the back of a top five in the 12 hour. And he's really quick through turns one, two. A little bit nicer over the curbs, the McLaren, compared to the Lamborghini. Major drives down the middle oh. of the road. Someone's had a big lock up in front. It was Bates that managed to get through. Caution oh, though, there's yellows here. Ah, this, oh, this is the Rito. That's an awkward spot to sit, unfortunately. That car has been very unhappy off the trailer. Now, more news. Peter Major reporting a clutch issue in that Tsugami Preps car. So hopefully, Cameron, it's not going to slow him down. We did see him struggle to get going on the formation lap. Yeah, well, you don't use the clutch once you get mobile in these cars. So the Gallardo has a foot clutch. A lot of the newer cars have a hand clutch. What about in the pits for the pit stop? That could be an issue. Oh, oh big, big one. Turn eight, it looks like the Tim McMillan Wood car. Yeah, and the Huracan was the car that oh. left over the back. He's going completely down the road backwards there, Dean Canto. Canto had nowhere to go in that Lamborghini Huracan and drove straight over the side of the car for Lamborghini. Tim Miles, I think, at the wheel. Yes, it is. So this will bring out our first safety car. Oh, my goodness. And that's not that going to be good. That could be a uh, red flag there. That is going to take a long time to repair that wall. And if you think about it, let's hope that, yeah, Dean's getting out. Left-hand drive car. Imagine the damage to the car that has done that much damage to the wall. Nasty hit. Both drivers look appear to be OK. Tim Miles is getting out. One thing you have to be careful in these cars is when you follow closely into turn eight, you get what is called aero wash. So the aero disturbs the aero of the car behind and it can give you a lot of understeer. So I just wonder if Tim Miles has just got too close. Oh, that's Dean's, great to see. Dean's, Dean's out of the car. Walking away from a very nasty accident through the turn eight. The a bit ginger though. Let's have a look at what happened here. He's had a big crash on turn eight before Dean Canto in supercars. Let's see what's happened here. Miles goes straight ahead, into that wall hard. Canto nowhere to go. And then he went in really hard with the right side as well. Look at the Audi, look at everyone just trying to avoid all the shrapnel and debris going everywhere. So let's have a look here. I think he just went in on his own, to be honest. Yeah, just went in a bit hot. There goes the Huracan over the front. The biggest bit of damage there, I think, was the, the impact of over the other car. So it's ripped the left corner out of the Huracan. Here we go. Oh, he got One. the inside fence. He did too. He clipped the inside curb. Dean just wasn't able to bring it back in time. So hard to make an, a change when you're doing 215 kilometres an hour. Oh, the Audi did get caught in that. Actually, a very good save. That was Vanderlinder in the Audi trying to sneak through. So, so car instantly deployed. Canto couldn't do much. Have a look here on the exit in real speed. Once that car's gone in in front of him, he's already committed to the throttle. Look, oh. you can see he's tried to restrict, you know, the exit, but uh, just no warning, not enough time. So there was contact. I'd be surprised if there's not a puncher in the 74 Audi out of that or some sort of damage. Watch the McDonald signage on the wall move. Now, it does help to dissipate some energy in doing so, which is good news. Dean's already got off the throttle. He's trying to squeeze through. Red flag here, Cameron. Yeah, this one's going to be called, unfortunately. How about the effort from a few drivers coming through here, including Twig and Tunis and Vandalinder, who all arrived on the scene and managed to somehow find their way through this. Look at Twig to the left-hand side of the Mercedes, running over pieces already. Canto taking a wild ride off the back of Tim Miles, going hard into the fence. These cars race in three weeks at the Grand Prix for the next round of the Sprint Championship. So here's real speed again. You can actually hear the impact on the inside yeah, wall. Can. And showing the speed that these cars still carry. Canto slipping with Tim Miles for a further 300 metres at least after that accident. 
So he's just clipped that inside curb a little bit too aggressively. Might have even grazed the Armco on the inside, but I'm not sure, just a lot of curb, and it just sent the car straight ahead. Like an open wheel accident when those two cars touch each other. The wheel's locking up, sending him up into the sky. Remember, and, uh, both drivers walking away from this one. Incredible safety measures in these cars. Gee, it was a good job by Vanderlinde to slide through between those two. It was only slight contact with the Audi. Here we go. Watch the car just dead straight. So Canto tries to get out of it. Can't make it through. And unfortunately, to rip the rear end out of that Huracan, I'd be surprised if there's not transmission and gearbox damage as well. Mid-engine car, both of them. The Huracan, a brand new car. Jim Manola's car owner brought that into the country late last year. And this one's been declared, unfortunately. So there's no, so you don't think there's a chance of getting a restart in this race? Well, well, we've got 30 minutes to go. So, gee, it's you'd have to think there's 15 minutes, 20 minutes repairing that wall. So we'll keep an eye on uh, race control. So and there's Laurie seven. Schmidt. 74 does have a puncture, by the way, Cameron. So you picked up on that one nicely from what yeah, you're well trying to get through. I think he's very lucky just to get away with that, to be honest, sliding through a gap that was closing rapidly. So under red flag, no work can be carried out on these cars. They can go out, plug cool vests in, fill up dry to driver bottles. Well, the Audi team clearly look like they want to change that tyre. That's why they are uh, taking the Ken, bottle out. Ken Collier, the category manager there, yelling out some instructions of what can and can't be done under the regulations. So the right front tyre there looks to be deflated for me on that uh, Valvoline car. Wow, look, they actually peeled the outside of the door off as well. Yeah, I saw the door wow. swing open. So there's a fair bit, of, fair bit of contact. And the clock has actually stopped. So to me, that means this race has been declared. The fact that it's not counting down. We don't have a red flag being shown anymore either. Mm, strange, but we'll wait to hear. Laurie Schmidt, certainly the most, next to Tim Schenken, the most experienced guy in race control. There he is, just to the left-hand side, nodding along, having a chat to Rod Wilson, who's just got one ear pulled out to have the chat on the right-hand side. Rod working quite closely with uh, GT Asia as well as his time racing numerous categories, including the V8 Utes. Repairs to that wall are coming along nicely already. So there's a fair bit going uh, on down there at the moment. Cameron, can you bring any news to us as to what's happening with the Audi? I jumped in with Ewan Cole, who's one of the technical guys here for the GTs. You can work on the cars, but only two people are allowed to work on the car at times. 74 did have a puncture. They've been able to change the tyre on this one as well. That you and Cole also said they are attempting to get this one back underway. It's all going to come down to, as Cameron McConville said before, that wall repair. But they're attempting to get this one back underway. Now, I wonder what this will mean if they do go back to racing then for our compulsory pit stop time. Now, the race in Perth had a red flag similar to this early on. I think from memory, they did the driver changes during the red flag, let the other drivers go out and then added the times on at the end of the race. From memory, uh, uh, yeah, from memory, I think you're correct. And I don't yeah. have the GT regulations in front of me, Chad, but cool. that sounds about right. They're obviously going to have to split it into the remaining race time and try and proportion that accordingly for, for across the driver combinations. But it can be confusing. This is just another replay of a $650,000 Lamborghini going backwards into the concrete. I don't think... This one is, that car is not pretty, but I think the Canto Manolis car will be repairable for the Grand Prix. Jim carries a lot of spares for these cars. These barriers, four and a half tonnes they weigh, and he just pushed that over like it was a picket fence. Watch that in the background. Moving four and a half tonnes, one or two metres to the right with that impact. Yeah, that's, Typically, uh, that Miles car is going to be almost a write-off, so to speak. So these cars do get insured, so you can have write-offs in yeah. GT racing. Yeah, well, you, you, usually they are insured. Uh, you don't want to know what those premiums are, by the way. No, and they're, they're not for the total car value. They're generally for a shell replacement cost, so generally up to about $150,000 of insurance. A lot of uh, fans actually ask that. Who pays for the damage? Well, you can actually insure race cars, particularly Carrera Cup cars, GT cars of, of high value. I heard the premiums went up after the Grand Prix last year because there were quite a few big accidents that weekend alone. And the, the cost of insuring these cars 
uh, yeah. obviously quite expensive. Well, you're looking... Let's just listen into this accident once more. Particularly the first impact. Definitely hear that first swipe of the wall. Look how brave flag marshals in there as well. Is it uh, like in the car when it when it gets to that degree of temperature and you have the cool suit fail? Taz said to me it happened to him in 2012 at the Gold Coast. Did, did that yeah. happen to you? Uh, yeah, absolutely. It's happened to I think every V8 supercar driver, and you're just so critical when you leave the grid that you can feel the cool vest working. If it's not really, if it, you know, if you're, that's the time for the driver to speak up on the grid with that sort of five minutes before the race. It's not working, it's not working. And I think the line was just crimped slightly. <laughs> it was interesting. I saw Phil Monday there, the sponsor, out with the ice. So that nothing like a hands-on sponsor who's been a big supporter of Lucas Dumbrell Motorsport. And I caught up with Phil last night and he said, yeah, I went and got as many bags as I could and tip it in to cool him off. But... Look, it, it gets to the point where it becomes unbearable and your concentration just, just goes AWOL. OK, Cam, let's go yeah, to you. Yeah, guys, two-minute warning just came down here. Peter Major, great job yesterday, but a clutch issue now. Yeah, we've got no clutch, so it's going to make the pit stop pretty interesting and getting off the line, but we'll just see how we go. Good luck. We better get off the grid because with two-minute warning, just gone. <laughs> he's pretty good at staying on the grid. A bit longer than he's meant to out there sometimes. Could be a, a bit of a mobile chicane down there, Cameron Van der Duncan. If he doesn't get a bit of a move on, because two-minute board is up, that's good news. Race control assessing what they're going to be doing with these control, uh, sorry, compulsory pit stop times. So with the with the clutch issue, so it's a rolling start. So he just needs to get somehow moving. Now in the pit stop, and I had this happen in GT myself last year in a 458. You, it's a very tricky one where the guys you'll have to have it in neutral with with some throttle, probably 4,500. Uh, RPM, get a push along and then just grab, grab the it. gear and it'll Whoa. have a big clunk. So, yeah, it's going to cost him, no doubt, time, but it's still doable because once you get moving in these cars, you don't use the clutch. So once he gets through the start and a little bit of uh, adjustment in the pit stop, uh, you know, he can, it won't affect his lap time pace. Might need a bit of help getting going right now. Yeah. Which, uh, moving. Here, yeah, we we're off. here we go. Here we go. So we're looking at the white Lamborghini, just slow to move at the moment, that clutch issue, but now he's up and going. Yesterday's race winner, Peter Major. So timing showing red flag still. And we'll be queuing them up behind the safety car to go back to racing conditions. The time has uh, started counting down, so 22 minutes, 17 seconds. So I'd say that red will disappear when we go green, hopefully. Well, we had, we had a green flag waving from the flag stand to get the drivers back so underway moving. Strange. Something's not relaying to uh, timing at this point. But uh, what you're seeing on your screen is what we're seeing here, other than a big red line across the top. So we'll keep an eye on that one. Now it's just gone 11 past 10 local time. Now why is that important? Because that was when the pit stop window was due to open at 11 minutes past 10. So we'll see if they are going to alter that. Otherwise, he'd be coming in right now if he could, but they will move that. And they will give us an update as to when they'd move it. Because it, the obvious thing would be try and get that out of the way as quickly yeah. as he could with the safety car out there. Absolutely. I mean, there could well be another one, but you don't really want to bank on that. So... Gee, it's going to be interesting. It's going to, it'll certainly change the complexity of this race. Very different race to yesterday. <laughs> this is going to be good. They're going to go back to racing, but they won't quite be sure when this pit stop window is going to open. So I like this because it means we really don't know how this is going to work out in terms of a race result. It usually would favour the drivers that have the shorter CPS time. Correct, 100%. So, it's, so those guys like Largo uh, out in front, Tony Bates, so the race director is calculating, we believe, right now, the new pit stop window. That'll be communicated over the race management channel to the pit lane. It's going to be from 10.18 to 10.26 local time, that okay. is. So that'll be roughly five and a half minutes away, in other words. OK, let's time for three, go back three to uh, some racing then, action. Yeah. Because the real insurance safety car cam has pulled off, so we can actually commentate a race again, which is good news. Cam's Australian GT Championship, round one, race three, on the restart. Largo picking up the speed. Now remember, that car in second, Tony Bates, the shorter pit stop time. Now this is interesting. 
I wonder if Scott yeah. Taylor Motorsport got the memo for the new pit stop window. Because they've so come in on the old pit stop window. Well, it's actually showing him in the lead at the moment too. So I think timing, <laughs> the timing's just con as confused because he's come through the lane. So nice start by Roger Largo and Tony Bates for that matter. He's gone with him. Oh no. And then out of the lane. So that's, uh, that's a strange run. I wonder if they came in thinking the window was open, only to find out it was slammed shut with the curtains closed. Now Largo, turn eight. Needs to build a seven second lead over the Mercedes behind him. Because that is the difference in their pit stops, which is quite a distance. Nearly three wide down at turn nine. Aggressive racing from Vanderlinder up the inside of Max Twig. He'll be on the outside for the next corner. Does Twig let him through? No. The Mercedes fights back. Cameron. Yeah, the update on the triple two. It actually picked up a puncture from the debris, so they had to change that over outside of the pit stop window. Oh, that's a shame. Could have uh, done that on the grid with the red flag had they known that it was there. Yeah. They mustn't have known it was happening until they could got have, going again. Could have been a slow leak. Yeah. Uh, but, gee, it's just a lottery when there's that much carbon fibre shrapnel across the road. If you just happen to nick the corner of one... Uh, you puncture one of these slick tyres very, very easily. So, car five, Greg Taylor, Nathan Antunis had a fairly up and down weekend, unfortunately, but great job to still have the car out circulating. Max Twig coming to grips with the Mercedes out of a BMW last year. So, up to 19th at the moment. I'll tell you who's really impressed me this weekend. The 44, here it comes, at the back of that pack just there. That's got Ash Walsh at the wheel. You'll see it. It's got Infant's friend on the uh, blue signage on the doors as well. And he has been fast this weekend. Look at this. Tim Macro trying to pick off the Audi star of Kelvin Vanderlinder. Vanderlinder covering on approach to turn eight. But that Lamborghini might have a bit more of a chance at the end of this long straight. And Tunis looks to the inside. Vanderlinder sticks his nose out. It's been a whole lap behind Twig. So it just goes to show, doesn't it, that straight line speed of the Lamborghini, but you'd be very, very hard to outbreak an Audi. So the two different strengths of each car showing in one lap around here. On board with Liam Talbot, who's kept his nose clean all weekend. Nice, consistent drive in the walking short Porsche. Vandalin are trying to wheel that Audi around despite the damage after changing that puncture earlier. We had a new lap record set here this weekend, yesterday by Ash Walsh. Further to my point about how fast he's been so far. There goes the 44. The boys tell me he's been flat through turn eight as he sticks up the inside there of the major Lamborghini. He gets picked off also by Fraser Ross. Probably a smart move though, when you look at the uh, time difference, 10 seconds, Ash Walsh has to stop longer than Peter Major as long as he stays in striking distance here. So apparently, you'll see the Ovo Mobile sign, apparently that Audi is flat through here. Let's find out. That's big. That just goes to show how much downforce <laughs> an Audi R8 has. That's V8 brave. V8 cars are brake. Carrera Cup cars are light brake. But in a modern GT3 car with so much aerodynamic aid, here comes Tim Macro, nice. driving very well this weekend under Max Twig. So that was coming from Nathan Antunas and Elliot Barber who have been working in this Audi camp this weekend. Uh, Antunas actually driving the Audis this weekend, saying that Walsh brave enough to hold it flat to the boards through turn eight. Well, You'd have to surprised. creep up on that as a driver. <laughs> yeah. It's not something you do on your outlap. Practice one lap, one you. you. <laughs> Might yeah. have a little left foot dab at the brake for a while. So a lot of, uh, you can have a lot of trust in the grip of the car, but that's how aerodynamics work, you know? The, the, the faster you commit and the longer you commit to the throttle, the more grip the car has and the more trust that it, that it gives you through the steering wheel as well. Walsh has Bates in his sight. These two raced each other last year in Carrera Cup Australia. So too Fraser Ross, actually. Let's see if you can get him. Pit stop window will be very close to opening at the end of this lap. It'll open in 45 seconds time. So that would be just about right at the pit entry when it opens. The other awkward thing is the pro rank driver, if you're in a pro rank team, which Fraser Ross is, is not allowed to drive for longer than 55% of the race. Does that include a red flag period or not include a red flag period? It's going to be tough to tell. Here comes Walsh up the inside. Oh. Bates wants to make him work for it, but the Audi goes through. Good clean move, very, very late under brakes. Then Ashwell showing his 
recent supercar experience against Tony Bates. He's doing a great job in the Mercedes for the first time. Now the window opens in two seconds and they'll just miss that pit entrance. Now the window's open. So we'll see a flurry of stops next time round. And you may even be better to wait a lap or two just to get a clear run in and out, particularly for Peter Major, who needs that clear run out, not having a clutch. Oh. So he might elect to go another lap or two. He comes from the McLaren. Wow, Bates trying to hold on to every spot he can, but gets relegated. And this is helping Roger Largo. Oh, no, oh, Ash no. Walsh. Off and down the escape road at turn four. All that good work undone. Yeah. And having to sit in the lane to 10 seconds longer than any of those other cars around him. He's just trying to find reverse. Sometimes you've got to come right off the clutch. Still, this works. Work, uh, this race has worked out better for James Kenduris oh, than it did last here, year. Yeah. That's not going to work on the inside of Turn 8. The Kenduris car got absolutely destroyed in Race 3 last year down at Turn 9 on the opening lap. So... It's not that bad at least. Wow, that's aggressive for Ben oh. <laughs> Just jam it down the inside and get it done. I thought he was actually going to tag Bates then. He <laughs> went in that deep, the car in front of Peter Major. So Ash Walsh is now half a lap behind, having just left the turn four escape road. Who's going to pit this time round? Oh, Bates, last minute <laughs> call to go in. And Tunis nearly clipped the rear of him. This is an Eggleston prepared... Car. Eggleston Motorsport looking the goods in Dunlop Super 2 this weekend with the likes of some pretty handy drivers including Paul Dumbrell this week and all year long for Eggleston Motorsport. Liam Talbot comes in, beautifully prepared, beautiful livery on this car, the Walkinshaw Porsche. So he has eight seconds longer to stop than Tony Bates. So a minute seven. 59 seconds for Tony Bates. So, depending on what lap Largo punches out in the next two laps, you, you would expect to see Tony Bates emerge in the lead for this one. It's kind of like a modern-day handicap race that used to be quite popular back in the day, only they handicapped them in the pit stops instead of at the start. Largo trying to open out a big lead. Got about two seconds on Fraser off. Driver change for the 73. Michael Hovey used to run in a Janetta stepping out of that car. Dan Gillison hopping in. Good to see Dan Gillison returning to motorsport this weekend. Still the movement net entry waits, but now is released. Tony Bates will go around for... Sorry, I should say Roger Largo will go around for another lap. Left of screen, that's the leader. Similar to yesterday's race where Bates emerged... Oh, he needs to get past him, if he does, because Bates will be on cold tyres. So Bates emerged a lap behind, but then obviously all evens out after the stop. Should be pretty close, because Roger Largo's pit stop time will be a minute and six seconds. Here goes Com Lettegar, the Frenchman. He leaps to action. Good first stint, actually, by Fraser Ross. Carved his way through. Was very aggressive in some of those overtaking manoeuvres under brakes. Trying to get that car up as far as possible because uh, a the reasonable longest. stop. Yeah, the minutes longest. 26. Last year's race three winner, Tony Walls in the pits as well on the objective McLaren. So Largo, quite literally a, a whole lap ahead, right in front of Tony Bates. They're doing one minute 21s in this race. He's got a one minute six second pit stop. It'd be pretty close, but Bates probably will just get the job done here. Look at this for racing down at turn nine. Van der Linde in a hurry. So if I was Peter Major, rather than getting distracted and having to lose time with Van der Linde, I'd come straight in now. Just get out of the way, get out of his way. There you go. And he does, because he's only going to lose time by letting the factory Audi driver through. Now this is where he now starts to think, how am I going to manage this? No clutch. It's going to be a tricky pit stop for Peter. Here we go. So will the car come to a crunching halt? No, he's pulled it up quite well. So he's got it into neutral quite easily. So all the way down on the left paddles, but you generally need the clutch from first to neutral. So he's been able to find neutral. And let's see how he, how he goes getting, it, getting a gear. Chris Doombas controlling him. 
So the engine's still running. Kate Bell from WA assisting as well. So he's starting to move to the rear of the car. No, they're going to let him try and get moving on his own here. We've seen this car move off the grid slowly by itself on two occasions, so it should, in theory, be able to do it a third time. Roger Largo, the right-hand side of our screen, still pushing hard. Will he come in on this lap? He's racing Tony Bates in the Mercedes. He's already had his stop, and yes, Largo dives to the lane. Pit stop window due to close in two and a half minutes. Look at the amount of lock trying to get in the lane. For Roger Largo, so a couple of really tidy laps. Vanderlinder 20.46. He goes major. He oh. can't get out, oh, and it's... he slowly goes. Oh. No, I think he stalled it. So he's going now, but you'd say that's probably added another six, at least six or seven seconds to his compulsory pit stop time. And there you go. There's Liam Talbot's been able to get through. So a couple of big laps required from Peter Major here with just under nine minutes to go. Race leader checking the tyre pressures. He's got a one minute, six second stop. Craig Baird will now be in the STM Stock Taylor Motorsport car. Now the JBS Lamborghini is racing against the Mercedes, who's already had the stop. Will it be able to come out out of that pit lane in front of that Beautiful move at net Merck, which has already been serviced. Must be an age to wait as he fires the Lamborghini back up. The V10's ready for action. Dave Russell at the front there, counting. Letting Roger know, a little bit longer. Looking pretty uh, casual there, breathing heavy, but away he goes. <laughs> a little wave, yeah, thanks, good job. Now then, does he get out down. in front of Tony Bates? That's the key here. It's gonna be very close looking for Bates. There he is. Oh. So look at this, Bates is going to just sneak into the lead. How close is that? Eight minutes to go in this race and it is absolutely on at the front. Now the triple two ahead of them has now got Craig Baird behind the wheel, but not in front of these two cars in the order. So he's out of position here. Actually looking like going a lap down if he's not careful, but Bates Probably won't try and lap Craig Bed. Bed should be able to drive away from them. Well, this is absolutely on at the front, Cameron. Ash Walsh fresh out of the car. We saw you run on under brakes. Was there a problem with the car? Yeah, it's been a couple of times this weekend where I've had an ABS lockout. Um, basically, what happens is it thinks that uh, it's locking up really bad and it uh, won't downshift. So it was stuck in fifth gear. I couldn't go down. And obviously, that runs you on. Every time you push the gear lever, it's like putting the throttle on. Uh, so it just pushes you forward in the brake zone. So a little bit disappointing. We've had a really good week up, weekend up until this point. NPC have done a great job for James and I. And uh, thanks to Superbarn and his friend for making this all happen. Two more questions for you. Are you flat through turn eight? And do you smile every time you do it? I don't think I smile, but yeah, it's flat through turn eight. Uh, it's very fast. Uh, the car has got great downforce, so uh, just trying to utilise that. And uh, to get a run on these guys in the Rexes, man, you need to go flat through eight. Thanks, Ash. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> He's referring to Lamborghini REXs, That's not right. Subaru WRXs, by the way. Now, the fight is on for the lead. The triple two car did a good job moving out of the way. Funny to see Craig Bed ever get lapped in a uh, GT race. But yeah, I think not he ideal. just thought, doesn't want to be a part of this fight. Roger Largo, this has been a great challenge for Roger Largo this weekend. He had Peter Major give him a run for his money yesterday. Now he's got Tony Bates. So this is two call them amateur drivers, but they've now got a lot of experience, and they're just driving. Oh, Bates has just oh. gone in a bit deep there, but they're driving so well now with four or five solid seasons in either GT or Carrera Cup under their belt. It's been great to watch the progress. Look at the speed of the Lamborghini in a straight line, which is exactly what Ash As Walsh was referring to. In fact, if anything, it hurt him a little bit. Got a bit too close going into turn eight. Oh, tight on brakes. So a bit of an update, we saw the BMW pull up on the first lap. They have another electrical gremlin, a different one to the one that's been hampering him this weekend. So hopefully they can get that car sorted. There's Dave Russell watching on. Has a Carrera Cup podium at this track in the past. And let's just see if he's going to get on the radio to Roger. So he's talking to the driver in the Lamborghini, coaching him through. Now the Lamborghini is a faster car in a straight line, especially with the new restrictor that this Mercedes is running. 
so could have the power to get by. Oh, she's thrown it through there. <laughs> no curb strike that I can see on the timing here, but very aggressive. So the Mercedes, as you mentioned, and a little bit more ballast fitted to it too since the, the balance of performance results. She's really working that car hard, but Bates driving nice and tidy. All right, Cam, put us in the seat of this Lamborghini right now. How do you get around that Mercedes? You've got to be, I suppose, realistic and know that it's going to be point to point. So you've got to get the power on nice and early. You know you've got more horsepower, so you just don't... You know, the corners leading onto the straights are the ones you've just got to focus on. Slowing the car up, getting it turned. You're not going to match it. He goes in really deep there. Probably hurts him a bit on the exit. But you've got to maximise that horsepower advantage. Oh, this is aggressive oh. by home Lettigar. Oh! Close. Factory McLaren driver. Split doesn't need to worry about paying the bills on that car. <laughs> <laughs> Never in doubt, Cam. Gee, a lot of mid-corner... Carrying a lot of mid-corner entry oh, speed. Oh, no. no. That's Greg Taylor in the wall. It's had a rough weekend, the number five. Should be able to get out of this position, hopefully, if it's not done steering damage. Uh, had to fix his car after a crash in race one. I think he might have got a helping hand there. Just spat around very quickly. Now, remember, the third car in frame here is not fighting for the lead. It's just the first two. That uh, STM Mercedes is down a lap. So Talbot up the inside of Griffith. Oh, oh contact they made between touch. the two. Then Taylor went underneath. And it made contact there. And what's happened? Oh, oh he's just gone around the front of Liam Talbot. Whoa. So this is on board with Liam Talbot, the 911 GT3R. So under brakes. Went, oh, a bit of contact. So went in quite deep and ran wide. He's in the wrong gear. Now he goes down the gear. And then I think Greg Taylor may have just misjudged the front of Liam Talbot's car there. So he was actually in second. Oh. And see how he's just sort of, there's nothing really Talbot could do. He was going along in a straight line. And unfortunately, Greg Taylor might have just turned in a smidgen too early and just tagged the front right of that 911. That could have been much, much bigger. Could have been disastrous for both those cars, but they got away with it. Now then, Largo all over the back of the Mercedes. So this is the battle for the round win as well. At the moment, Bates on 189 points, Largo 180, and Peter Major on 161. Oh. So whoever wins this race will leave here leading the Australian GT Championship. This is high stake stuff. Barely a couple of laps left in this one. The lower ranked drivers have had a weekend to remember with the Safety cars coming out before the control uh, compulsory pit stop times. It's really helped those lower ranked drivers to run at the front of the field. Just rolling out of the gas before turn eight. Needs to get a good exit. Draw close. We've seen how deep he can go under brakes. Oh, that's where he got passed for the lead yesterday. So trying to pull the same move that cost him race two. So almost contacted the exit there as well, Cam. He's really breaking a lot later in this race. I don't know if Dave Russell has tuned him up a bit. Oh, Bates gets a little bit taily. Largo's got a good run here. He's going to try the over and under. But he won't be quite close enough. Oh, Bates putting that car right in the middle of the road at the approach of the Adelaide hairpin. And this will be probably the penultimate lap then. Not a lot of time left. Roger Lago wants this win. Beto decides I'll get a bit closer and have a little look. <laughs> He's got the headlights on, but um, that might distract Roger Lago. But he needs to not even look in the mirror. It's David Russell coaching Roger Lago in that Lamborghini. Staying pretty calm, really, but as a driver, he'd be frustrated because <laughs> he probably knows what needs to happen. And uh, there's only so much coaching you can do through a two-way radio. So you'll have two more attempts at turn nine, two more attempts at the last corner. But Bates does get out of turn seven quite well, which means he can open up a little bit of a lead, which he then uses to hold on to that point of the field down at turn nine. Largo wide. Got a lot of understeer, actually. So again, just perhaps 
asking a bit too much of the front tyre. You know, too much ABS will actually cause push or overload that front tyre. So that's braking so late, the car now just doesn't want to turn. So the clock ticking down to zero. That means the next time by should be the last lap. Largo really strong down there as well. Can Tony Bates hang on? He's won 10 out of the last 11 races that he's competed at at this venue. See Nine in Carrera Cup and one in the GTs. Let's go through over the curves. A oh, nice exit for Tony Bates there. Just slowed it up and got a really good slingshot out of the corner. He knew he'd be vulnerable up here. So you see how much bumps and ABS and squeaking of the brakes on the Lamborghini. Perfectly normal with the pad material, the race brakes. Really working hard. He needs to get a nice clean run out of here, Roger Largo. See that Tony Bates driving the car very different style. So really squaring the corner off, slowing the car up, trying to get maximum traction. And he's certainly closer here. He's in the toe. This is the closest he's been on the exit of eight. But probably a bit too far back. Oh, now Bates almost understeers wide at the exit of turn nine. Is Largo close enough? With about four corners to go. We've got a grandstand finish for the last of the GT races here this weekend. Very close indeed. One last corner for Tony Bates to hang on. And Largo has a real look. Oh. Bates closed the door in the last minute, didn't he? <laughs> nice drive, though, Tony Bates. Great racing. Side by side of the finish line. Bates wins it by a tenth. Gee, Largo got really close at the finish line. I just wonder if Bates hit the limiter. Trying to shift gears. Meanwhile, Tony Walls will get home for third. First of the McLarens. Pete Major should be fourth. Talbot hanging on for fifth despite getting involved with a, a bit of a scuffle. Oh, man. Roger Largo can take a breather. Second again. There are a few of those here this weekend. Now, what happened here to Tony Bates? Because he was fairly clear of him. And then Largo just came out of nowhere and nearly picked his pocket. He actually slowed up, I think, to wave to the Eagleston Motorsport <laughs> boys. But I don't know if he'd want to slow up. Much, lot, much more, 0.1 of a second, but well done, Tony Bates. Two out of three this weekend. He wins the round on 189 points from Largo. Pete Major, fourth on the results, but third overall. Liam Talbot, Combe Lediger, Michael Hovey, Mark Griffith, Jeff Embry, and Ash Samadi. Good job for him inside the top 10. 0.1 of a second, very close. We did have Al Simonson win a race here once by 0.06 of a second, so not quite the closest. For the round, it looks like this. Tony Bates will take the top step. Fourth year in a row that he has done that here, whether it be Carrera Cup or in the GTs. Great work. Major getting himself on the podium on debut. That is a huge effort as well. Cameron, thank you very much for your help here this weekend in the Australian GT Championship.